Thank you, Eric. Thank you to SCCA and the organizers. It is a real privilege uh, to be here on behalf of SIC and Singapore. I will be discussing the emerging use of emergency interim measures in institutional arbitration and perhaps complementary institutional tools for dealing with other situations of urgency. It is perhaps appropriate uh, to be accompanied by uh, Andrea Calaveras, who of course was the former Secretary General of ICC. It was ICC that started this conversation in 1990 with the introduction of the pre-arbitral referee. Our chair, Eric Tuckman from AAA ICDR, ICDR really gave us the modern conception of an emergency arbitrator in 2006. So the first institution to introduce this proper emergency arbitrator. Institutions, as institutions often do, followed the Stockholm Chamber of Commerce in 2010, Singapore International Arbitration Center in 2010, ICC in 2012, HKIC in 2013, LCIA in 2014. And you can see how the institutions work together, whether directly or ind indirectly, to continue to update and refine these procedures. I was just traveling in from Beijing. SIC is now conducting academies, so we were training young professionals in China on the use of emergency arbitration, expedited procedure, and early dismissal. And I think it's actually quite timely because the Beijing Arbitration Commission is the first mainland Chinese inst institution to have an emergency arbitrator order in force. This order was taken to Hong Kong. So this emergency arbitrator procedure, at its core, what it is is a mechanism to preserve the status quo prior to the constitution of the tribunal. And if you look at it, absent this procedure for the appointment of an emergency arbitrator, parties are really left with two options. A party could wait for the constitution of the tribunal, subject to the urgency of the case. This may work with a sole arbitrator tribunal, if that sole arbitrator can get up quickly. And in fact, there could be tactical reasons for taking it to a sole arbitrator, if you can get the sole arbitrator quickly. Because really, these emergency arbitrator orders are holding orders. This is going to be re-looked at by the tribunal when constituted. It may be modified and vacated. So it could work in a sole arbitrator tribunal. But with a very urgent case with a three-member tribunal, it's unlikely that you can get a three-member tribunal constituted in time. And so that's where the appointment of an emergency arbitrator comes in. So the parties have the option first to wait for the constitution of the tribunal. And the second is to apply to the competent court. This could be the seat court, the curial court, or it could be the court where the enforcement or really the effect of the emergency arbitrator order is sought. And there's perfectly good reasons for going to court. And if you look at most of the institutional rules on emergency arbitration, great pains are taken to ensure that these emergency arbitrator provisions are not incompatible with an application to court. So for instance, if a party needed an order against uh, a third party, a non-signatory to the arbitration agreement, an emergency arbitrator just like a tribunal without those powers of Empyrean, it might make sense to go to the court. It could be the case that you need ex parte relief. So save for the Swiss chambers, all of the sets of institutional rules require notice to be given uh, to the other parties. So if you needed that ex parte relief, application to the court makes sense again or really if confidentiality is not an issue. But these emergency arbitrator provisions, when you're looking at it from a court provision, philosophically, parties that have agreed to arbitration to immediately have to go off to court to get urgent interim relief really is not what the arbitral process is about. You may also be in a foreign court. There could be neutrality issues. The standard for the grant of interim relief that might be granted by the court could be different than an emergency arbitrator. So in SIC arbitrations, SIC emergency arbitrators tend to use what is now almost the transnational test, really drawn from American cyanamid and its progeny. So you're looking at a good arguable case, irreparable harm, urgency, balance of convenience. So the test could be different uh, as well. You also have a lack of, a potential lack of speed and the possibility of an appellate process in court. Uh, so the emergency arbitrator provision really has kind of change the landscape for arbitration by allowing parties that have agreed to arbitration to stay within the, the arbitral process. So looking at SIC, 
SIC was the first Asian institution to introduce the emergency arbitrator provisions. We have had 83 applications since this provision was introduced in 2010. I was speaking with Eric uh, before the panel. ICDR has had 91. Andrea indicated that ICC has had around 100. So this is an enormous amount of applications. What's very interesting about what's happened in Singapore is that there has really become uh, a culture and a certain amount of experience and nuance with these emergency arbitrator applications because really having 83 of these in one jurisdiction. So the Secretariat has uh, come to be much, much quicker and much more experienced with these emergency arbitrator applications because there's a lot of different things that can happen during the, the course of an application. You could have a cross application. So a claimant files for the appointment of an emergency arbitrator. The respondent immediately files for a cross application. You might have a challenge to the appointment of the emergency arbitrator. This has to be done within two days of appointment, but you could have multiple challenges. SIC by rule issues reasoned decisions on challenges. So you have to be able to do that uh, within the timing of this very urgent emergency arbitrator proceedings. Even something as simple as dealing with conflicts for arbitrators. Because at SIC, we appoint emergency arbitrators within 24 hours. You have to know which emergency arbitrators to approach. I think as a matter of practice across most institutions, you will uh, approach emergency arbitrators on a provisional basis, see whether they're able to act, provide a provisional con conflict list, and then if the president accepts the application, then you appoint the emergency arbitrator. Singapore is also unique because by law, the orders and awards of emergency arbitrators are enforceable as an order of the High Court in Singapore. Hong Kong is another jurisdiction that is provided for the enforceability of these emergency arbitrator orders. Because that is ultimately the question with an emergency arbitrator order. If you have to take it to a different jurisdiction, can you have it enforced? SIC has had a good experience, particularly of late, in terms of how the courts are taking notice of SIC emergency arbitrator decisions. So the orders of an emergency arbitrator have been given effect in the Delhi High Court, Bombay High Court, and also in the District of Columbia. So not New York Convention enforceable, but courts are starting to give effect to these orders. SIC also included an opt-in provision uh, in its SIC investment rules for the appointment of an emergency arbitrator. We are starting to see some jurisprudence coming from the Stockhold Chamber of Commerce for emergency arbitrators uh, in treaty disputes sometimes finding that they have jurisdiction even within, even within a cooling off period. Emergency arbitrators are able to order uh, broad uh, types of interim disputes. We have seen a gag order, anti-suit injunctions, restraining a party from calling on a bank, guarantee delivery up of documents, preservation of evidence. Most of these will be uh, status quo injunctions. You will from time to time also see a mandatory injunction. The timelines, as I said, move very quickly. Emergency arbitrator appointed within 24 hours, 365 days of work a year. These applications almost always come in on Friday nights or the eve of a holiday. Usually a preliminary order, if there's a holding order required, will be issued within a few days. And the average time for the actual order is 8.5 days. There are also a few additional tools at, SI at SIC and other institutions if there's urgency on the merits. So SIC has an expedited procedure, a fast track procedure where an award is made six months from the constitution of the tribunal. So if an award is needed on the merits within six months, a party could apply, could apply under the head of exceptional urgency for this expedited procedure. SIC is also the first commercial institution to introduce a provision for early dismissal of claims and defenses on the basis of manifest lack of legal merit or manifest lack of jurisdiction. This will allow parties, say, in circumstances where the facts are not in dispute, but there's an urgent question of law to get this decision at an early stage rather than having to wait uh, for the full period of the arbitration. I guess the theme here really is, is that the institutions keep innovating keep looking at what the other institutions are doing, and we keep getting better and better sets of rules. We see that with the SCCA rules. SIC has also taken another step for innovation. Our president, Gary Bourne, has introduced a proposal for the cross-institution consolidation of arbitrations. This will require institutions talking, keeping up a dialogue, and we're looking forward to keeping this dialogue going with the SCCA and all of the other institutions. 
Thank you, and I wish you all a successful conference.